and thanks for joining me for another training lesson in Microbellum Toolbox. In this video, we're going to go through the initial setup process on generating a quote and job cost reports for this next project. Now, this is the first video inside of our estimating training plan, so follow along with me and let's learn how we can estimate a project using Microbellum Toolbox. So we're ready to start estimating projects in Toolbox. The first thing that I want to do is set up an employee who will be doing the estimating. Now, this isn't necessary for generating quotes or costing reports. But by doing this, you are able to set up employee permissions that allow or lock people out of accessing sensitive data in Toolbox. So I've already spent the time and set up a couple of new employees in our employee data sheet. We have myself and our estimator, Susan. To add a new employee, you'll just have to right click in this open space and add a new employee. And then going through the steps to enter all their personal information. Once you're finished, hit save and your new employee has been added. Right click and you can also delete that selected employee. Now that Susan is set up as an employee in the company, the estimate that we're going to work on is going to be going to a new contractor who we haven't worked with before. So I want to make sure that all their company data is also in our company setup list under general contacts. So here we have the company and contact management interface. By default, we already have a couple company names in there. I went ahead and I added this new one, Hammer and Nails Construction. And to do that, you would just right click in this open space and add a new company. Now, all this information for this company can be used on this quote that we're going to be submitting for this new project. So I want to go ahead and spend the time to set all this up correctly. And once you have that, you have your new company name with the correct information. Now, if there happens to be a contact that you typically work with for this company, you can also add them under the contacts list here. Again, I've already went ahead and I've set this new one up. Just like before, we have the option to add a new contact, edit existing, Notice under this column here for company, we don't have Joel currently assigned to a company. So by right clicking on that, we can associate contacts to a specific company. And we'll assign Joel to our hammer and nails construction. So now that we see Joel here, as we select that radio button contacts, we have this category called contacts as well. But when I select that, we don't see Joel's name in there. And that's just because he's not currently in that category. So select off of that contacts radio button, select it again, right click on Joel's name or the new contact and move that selected contact into a category. We can also right click and add new categories if you want. Back into the companies, same thing for that, general contacts. We only have microbellum in the general contacts category. So we would just do the same thing, right click and move the selected companies into a category. And if there were any projects associated to that company, you would see the list here. Like I mentioned, all this information that we have inside of this company and contact management can be used to populate costing reports or any other reports inside of Toolbox. And now that we have the company setup complete, let's open up a new project and start this bid. I'm just going to right click under the category that I want this new project to be under. Let's call this one new bid, keep it simple, and hit OK. And now once the new project has been created, the first thing that will open up is our project properties. Now here we're going to want to spend some time to make sure that we have this project set up correctly. For right now, we're just going to focus on the project properties. And in another video, we'll go through on how we want this project to be quoted and hopefully built if we're awarded this job. So first off in the job description, we would want to enter something here. Now, currently, we already are using some of these property names in our cost and reports. Job description doesn't happen to be one of them, but by using our report designer tool, you could add that job description to a report. Right now, it's just for us as we go back into this project and see some of the properties. Some of the names that we do include by default into the cost and reports are the job number. So when we open the report, this will be the quote number that we see. This may be different than your project numbers that you actually use for production. So for this one, we'll just call it new quote 1000. And another one is general contact. So because we have the hammer and nails construction that we just added to our general contacts list, we can now use that to show up on our report. And now we're taken into the contacts under that company name. Because this isn't going to the specific person in the company, it's going to go to the company itself. We're going to want to make sure that we don't select the name and just hit cancel. The way the report is set up, we're not going to see the prepared for information if we use the contact name. So just remember, we want to keep that as the company name. Now the contractor, this isn't set up by default on the report. So we'll add the contact here and we can decide later on if it's something that we want to include. And the other one that we want to fill out is our estimator, so that also shows up on the report. So there's Susan, our estimator, and she'll be the contact for the company as they review the pricing. 
But right now, that's all we'll enter for the project properties. Just make sure we save and close out of that. And now let's go into the product list. Typically, when estimating a project, most of the work is going to be done inside of this product list. Now, of course, that may change per project, but at least for the role of the estimator, most of your time is going to be spent in here. So that's where we're going to leave it for now, and we'll pick this back up in our next video. And now, in the next video of Estimating with Toolbox, we can start working on adding the products we need so we have something to put pricing to. So that's it for now, and I'll see you in our next lesson of training.